So what kind of idea does this East Village, New York City neighborhood give you about today's guest with its tattoo parlors and piercing salons? You're expecting maybe Dennis Rodman or Marilyn Manson? Aha, <laughs> but wait. Your Grace. Hi there. Nice to see nice you. Nice to see you again yeah, after you. Grace. Fergie. Duchess. Duchess. Duchess is fine. Sarah, Fergie, Sorry. whatever. Well, there goes the neighborhood. No, this is good. This we've, is good. We've got the tattoo parlors and piercing salons. Which would you like for lunch? Um, I think we'll just have... Um, no tongue piercing? No, no tongue piercing today. That yeah. will limit yeah. the amount that you eat during lunch. Yeah, exactly. I know. Here we go. Let's go. Yeah. Well, look who's here, everybody. Let's not pretend we don't notice, right? Are they, are they genuinely having lunch? Yes, look, look, there's beer on the table, wine, uh, food. Oh, good. Let's good. have a nice hello for Sarah Ferguson. Oh. The Duchess of York. She's Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York. Fergie is now a single working mom, and since her royal divorce from Prince Andrew, she's authored several books, including her most recent, Dieting with the Duchess. Fergie's restaurant pick is Bagatelle on St. Mark's Place in New York, which features an eclectic menu with Irish and European influences. Well, Sarah Ferguson, welcome back. Our first Thank ever repeat much. guest at the corner table. Well, it really, am I the first? You're the first to be second. Oh, good. It's nice so to have excited. you with us. No, but there is a curiosity about why you chose a restaurant at St. Mark's Place in East Village with all the piercing salons and tattoo parlors. Mm -hmm. Why are well, we here? Well, um, well, that's a good question, actually, Bill. Uh, yep. I'm but very glad well, to start with a good okay. question. Okay. Yes. Um, firstly, the, the man who owns uh, this restaurant is uh, a man called Joe King. Joe King. And if you actually take Joe King and say it quickly, you got to be joking. Joking. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh. And, um, and the I'm thing is, is, that, is that he's also from Ireland, and I'm from Ireland, and I thought that it was really good to actually support the Bagatelle restaurant down mm. here. It's also in Little London, and so it's sort of British, and yes, I know, and all these other good things. Um, although, Bill, I think tattooing and piercing might be out today. I'm no, not sure. we don't want any piercing. Yeah. Which, can you ever imagine yourself getting a tattoo? Uh, uh, Seriously, could you? Yes, but it would have to be very, very small. Um, That's like mine. Yeah, have you got one? I got one since the last time I saw you, I got a tattoo. You have not. I did. A real one? Yeah, I, a real one. Would Where? you like to see it? Yeah. I actually, here. Oh, don't be so silly. <laughs> you did not. That is pen and ink. Yes, you know, it is. It says Fergie so much. Oh, uh, cool. So you can't imagine um, that. Oh, I you can get, get the a bill. I can get the bill. No, no, no. Just let it go with that. By the way, I, I ordered for you. Thank you very much. I ordered Thank the you. Irish smoked salmon for you. And, right. And I have the, the, the vegetable uh, terrine. Oh, good. Well, but it's, it's been a year, you know, since I've seen you. Is it really been? Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't heard from you. But I'm sorry, Bill. <laughs> I mean, one of those no people calls. to take out to dinner and never ring up, I never sang to nothing. No, I mean, I thought, well, maybe you'd call want to go to Coney Island mm. with me or Circle Line Cruise or something. Yeah, and so all I do is ring up and say, can we go to Little London? No, but this isn't a second, this is not a rematch. This is a second date. Second date. This okay. is a second date. Well, right. since on the big scale of life, how, is, how have things been in the year? Well, they've been all right. They've been all right. You know what? I think the journey of life is an extraordinary journey. My journey has been um, one of bereavement of my mum, mm -hmm. and um, it's been coming to terms with that. And of course, that hasn't helped with uh, my dad, because when that happened, I, of course, I ate far too much. Just as with the tragic death of her friend, Princess Diana, with the recent loss of her mother, Fergie once again did have problems controlling her eating. At the, at the lowest point this time, what were the words that rang the most true? Uh, face up to the feelings that you have within. Don't try and, de and, and uh, squash grief with food because that's not going to help you. You've got to take the grief out and say, I'm really upset and really miserable or I don't, I'm in despair and live with it. And then you won't need food as the crutch to, 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 and then you won't put on weight and then you won't beat yourself up and then your self-esteem won't go down and da 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 da. But what, would you also not agree, not just that there is a period of time when you're just not going to be perfect? When you're, you're, when you're grieving, when things are bad, and you have to just go with it. That's, yeah, you do. Because, let's face it, we're human. We're human. I know. We're but, human. Yeah, that human word. But, but the other thing is that, is that it's okay, too. Do you know what I mean? With Weight Watchers, it's like, I, it's, like it's there as a support for you. Mm -hmm. So I knew that, okay, so I put on seven pounds, whatever, but I could get it back again because Weight Watchers was there. And I really mean it, you know? One of, I know you mean it. That's yeah. what, what we're here for. Now, one of the things it says in the book is secrets and sensible advice for a great body. Mm. Now, the last time we talked, you were quite 
specific about the fact that you personally do not think you have a great body. No, I don't. And I still don't. You still don't? No. No, this is on the road to a great body. You're on the road. <laughs> but I will say this, as I look at the back, very nice legs. And nice legs? You like yes. your legs? Yes, oh, I'm you, quite impressed with that. Yeah, thank you very much. But, but, so but, I mean, Fergie's like the, battle with her weight and all of her other personal mm -hmm. struggles have been a matter of public record. You know what? There are no small skeletons in my world. Everything is out there in your life. Isn't it? Everything. Everything. I, I wish I could figure out something to reveal about it, but I don't think we can come up with it today. No, we can't, really. But that's kind of amazing, isn't it? Don't you think? Yeah, but actually, you know what I was wondering about? You know the movies that have been made where oh, you've yeah. been play portrayed by various actresses oh, in yes. the movies? Mm. Do you ever watch them? Well, I haven't because... Ah, oh, come uh, on. No, no, I haven't. I've just looked, turned it on and turned it off because they always make me out to be so huge in the face. Have you ever seen them? The girls that play me are all sort of... Um, hockey sticks and slony and with big jolly faces. I don't think I look like that, do I? No, you look wonderful. Okay. So you've never sat down and watched one of those TV movies about no, the royals, about angry. you and Andrew or angry. anything like that? It makes you angry? Yeah, it makes me furious. You're not going to shoot wrong. out the television like Elvis, so. No, no, no. Did he do that? Sure. All oh, right. Yeah, Robert yeah. Goulet was singing once and Elvis pulled out a gun and shot at the TV. Really? Yeah. That's going a bit, bit too far. Back. Yes, it is. Don't you think? We, you didn't even touch your food. Oh, well, hold on. Excuse a, have me. Have a little of that. Oh, my gosh. I'll have some of this Yeah, but you ordered treat. onions. Okay. I didn't onions. order the onions. You know no, something? I, raw onions, it's, like this. It's bad for the Let breath. me just say this. This, this is the bane of my existence, eating out raw breath, onions. Breath. If I never have one of these, I'm yeah. okay. I'm yeah. sorry they came with a dish. Is everything else mm. okay? Everything else delicious. Delicious. All right. But that is not good for kissing. No. Not that we're going to kiss, It's not even Bill. good for breathing. No, we're no. not. All right. We're not, yeah. not going to kiss. Can I, can I, Bill, can I just ask you something? Yes, of course. Why in America does everybody serve garlic in everything? I mean, not because, everybody because or we're within everything. fascinated but. by Italians. So you, really? Yeah, Americans really, all those Americans who went to Italy in the 50s, the 60s, right, and the right, 70s, right. they had that great Italian food, they came back, discovered garlic, mm -hmm. they've been pressing garlic ever since. But they have it in everything. I mean, when I get in a car now, the drivers have, have it on their breath, and so they turn around and hey, say, Hey, you're lucky you know, if that's the only thing they've got up there. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, we'll take a break, we'll come back, we're going to bring you an entree which I ordered for you, which I think you'll like, and you're going to give me some advice on how to eat my entree. Okay, okay. okay? Thanks, Bill. Bagatelle is a comfortable spot with Art Deco-influenced murals and a cozy bar that showcases live performances. While we were waiting for our entrees, Fergie and I enjoyed the trio. Half the reason why I wanted to come here is because Mum was so Irish and she always said to me, whenever time she saw me, she always said to me, come on darling, let's dance a jig together. And so it's very strong, this is very strong. Well, let's listen. Sounds good, but let's eat. Fergie has chicken Siciliano, which is prepared with caramelized onions, and I've got something to tempt Fergie. Fish and chips. <gasps> Does that not look delicious? Well, I'm, here, come on. It's a tiny piece, right? I'll have a little bit Okay, of you have a little bit of mine. Absolutely. Okay, what's that chicken under there? It, there's mm. chicken in there, for sure. Okay. It's just a little olive oil. Okay. Now, there's been big news recently. Mm. Hold on, I must just savor this, okay? Yeah. Mmm. 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 Mm. That is real fish and chips. That's a highlight reel for the mm. year. Oh, mm. yeah. Um, mm. What does it bring back? What kind of memories does fish and chips bring back for you? Childhood memories. Very right? serious childhood. Because um, when I came back from school, at the bottom of the road where I lived, um, you, there was a van that sold fish and chips. And you actually went and queued up outside the van. I know I don't look as old as that, but it's true. You wouldn't say that, but I yeah. look so young that I couldn't. Well, yeah, well, thanks. Well, 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 okay. Don't look like somebody's going to turn 40 okay. this year. Okay, so you stand up. <laughs> thanks so much for that. Yeah. I'm actually pleased about that. Anyway, Go so I used to queue up outside the van, mm -hmm. right? And then a little lady comes, opens the window and says, yes. And I'll say, uh, cotton chips, please. Cotton chips. To go, right? And then you, they wrap it in newspaper and you put it under your arm and go back up, up to the farm where I lived. And it doesn't bother you that the food is wrapped in newspaper? It's something we would never see in this country. We go into McDonald's, the thing comes in a burger container that goes in a bag. So you've got three levels to get through to get to your burger. Really? Yeah, sure. See, that proves you haven't been to McDonald's recently. Um, I have actually, but I don't take away. Just I right sit, there in the place. I sit on the mushroom. With my girls. <laughs> you actually, a good th time. There's a sort of in the, in the corner of McDonald's in mm -hmm. Windsor, there is the castle on the right, 
me and McDonald's with the girls sitting on a mushroom. It's all kind of surreal. Really. I must ask you a question about the castle. The last okay. time we were together, we talked about the formal, the manners and the formal dining with the queen, the formal conversation on the left, the formal conversation on the right. What is the food like at Buckingham Palace at those formal dinners? <clears throat> at the formal dinners. At the formal dinners. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a bit of this. Well, yes, and how interesting. And uh, you're pushing it around the plate a bit because it's very saucy. It's saucy? Yeah, saucy. Very saucy. Saucy in the... Rich in sauce, mm. you know, and many calories. So it doesn't so, reflect the new modern uh, London cuisine, the greatest restaurant city in the world, well, being London. Um, no, not, not at the moment, but of course I haven't been there recently. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You haven't been there. I know that. But last time I was there, it was. Um, it was. Uh, it's. Um, <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that ever happened at one of those formal dinners? Well, the craziest. Remember, thing. You're in one of these long dresses, and mine were always sort of boned very heavily, so you didn't eat too much because you couldn't get much in because it's like wearing a corset, <laughs> you know. But, but one of the most, I think, uh, one of the most extraordinary things was um, when I was running along the corridor and I had a fake hair piece in my hair. And the hairdresser that came that night to put it in didn't quite do a good enough job. And as usual, I was late for dinner, you know. <laughs> and you have to be ahead of Her Majesty and the, the, and, uh, and, the, and the Duke of Edinburgh. And you have to get in there before. And um, I was running so fast down the corridor that um, the, the hair piece fell out. And, um, Did you know? And, uh, no. And uh, the, Duke, the Duke of Edinburgh walked into dinner and Did said... Did someone um, shoot it on the floor? <laughs> he what walked into say? dinner and he gave it to me and said, I believe this is yours. Oh, my word. Uh, yeah, you died. Uh, you died. You died. There's a big, big news about uh, your former brother-in-law, Prince Edward, getting married to Sophie. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you a couple of questions about that, because they are hoping to have, quote, a normal life. She's not going to take a title. They're, they're both going to be working their jobs. Do you think it's possible to marry into the royal family and, quote, have a normal life? Should we not go down that road? You know why, Bill? Because it's going to get me into deep doo doo. Really? Yeah. Deep bad. I, I I think the most important thing is that is that is that lots of love and lots of happiness and lots of good things to them both. And I really do wish her the best of luck. Um, when when the news came out, I missed Diana very much because I kept thinking of what Diana and I have been through. Well, and they're already comparing um, her to Diana, which is. And I just say that. Um, good luck to her, and and, and I really hope that um, she can make a success of it. It's, it's, it's pretty difficult sometimes to, in the British tabloids, they keep comparing, um, you know, Diana and I, you know, our failed marriages, and will she be the success and, and, and ours are failures, and, and quite frankly, um, there should be no comparison with anybody in life. No, it's Whether a unique Whether it's me or you yeah. or anybody, it, 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 no one should compare, not, you do not compare thee to somebody else, what is that? That yeah. great, and I, and I just, and I believe very strongly that You've got to go through life with love in your heart, because as Mother Teresa said, the greatest thing in life which is lacking is lack of love. Mm -hmm. It's the greatest disease of life. So you've got to have compassion, you've got to, you've got to really feel it and say, okay, good luck, and go forward. You know, I got something I think you're going to enjoy. I have part of your 1999 horoscope. Oh! Yes. Bill, I am now very excited. Tell right, me. You are a Libra. I'm ready. Okay, I'm you ready. are a Libra. Okay, I'm ready. Romantic and business partnerships will require added attention early this year. Romantic and business partners. And business, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Expect work officials and romantic partners to now accept responsibility for future success. Oh, really? Right. Now, here's the one that I'm really wondering about. Marital status, or social outlets, will shift dramatically in 1999. Really? Yeah, okay, no. so what does that mean? Do well, I'm, you're, it's your sign. How am okay. I supposed to know? Well, I'm not an astrologer. Marital status or social outlets will shift around in 1999. Marital really? status or social outlets. What do we think? Mm -hmm. Any possibility of a return? What, the next day, Bill? Oh, I'm not even thinking. No, I'm out of it. <laughs> no, I, I'm, no, I'm type. joking. No, I'm, I'm your pal. Joking. I'm not your type. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, but anyway. I was just jo joking. That is, no, no. I'm just, it's an interesting <laughs> thing to joke about. Okay. But what? what? Would you get married again? I honestly don't know. Because I, I don't know. I've ha I got to go with the feelings. Because that's what I've been teaching myself. Go with feelings and stop trying to th think everything through so completely. So you're really uncertain about it. It's not, you're out, not out there looking for a man. No way. No way. If I happen to trip over whatever, prince. then we'll see. And not a prince charming. Maybe. Hey, hey, Maybe. hey it could happen. Hey, have a Brussels sprout. We'll oh. take a break. Brussels sprouts? Yes, Brussels sprouts. Heavens. Huh. I used to grow them on the farm. You did? My father made me pick them every day. I ordered dessert for you. 
Oh no, you didn't. Apple pie. We're gonna split it. Oh wait. Okay. Okay. Mmm. Okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> York and a tempting dessert. And we've got some apple pie for dessert, Sarah right. Ferguson, in which I asked him to cut in half because your book, Dotting with the Duchess, says have dessert, but just have half a dessert. Or have a mouthful. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to try but right this away. This looks very good, actually, doesn't it? Well, what I tried to order something all American, you know, apple yeah. pie. But you're very kind to have done all the ordering. Well, otherwise you would have been pretty hungry. Yeah, I would have been. I've been watching you eat fish and chips. Now, as I read both your, your other book and this book, as well as your autobiography, Thank you. You, you have evolved and you're committed to personal growth understanding yourself more and more. If you knew then, when you married Prince Andrew, difficult marriage, he was away, you were only together 42 years, 42 days a year. If you knew then what you know now, do you think you could have made it work with the head you have today? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I would love to go back, you know. I'd love to go back and be the bride I was and start again with the head I have now. But that's, that's no can do. So I do live with regrets a lot of the time. And that's why sometimes you, I, my eyes show despair, because I do regret um, lots of things. But we've got to go move, move forward. Hey, do you share this with Andrew? Do you talk Absolutely. to him about things like that? Yeah, well, we, you know, we live in the same house, and, uh, and we talk daily, daily. Um, when he's there, he's normally in London f through the week right. and comes back at weekends. But when he's there, we talk all the time about both of us growing up together on our journeys. And whatever it took, to grow up, whether it be divorce or marriage or you know children or whatever it is, we are all on journeys. And, and you've got the mutual responsibility of the two children, a good friendship with your friendship. former hu husband. Yeah. Is do you ever think you could tie the knot again? That it could work. I again don't with know, you? Bill. I don't know. The, mm. the most important thing is is like get working through all these feelings and emotions. Mm. And and I, I never look. I never look forward now to things like oh should I, could I, would right. I. I just go today and the end of the week and I've done well, as I said. You're doing very well and you're helping a lot of people too. Well. Now how about a fantasy question, yeah, a little fantasy. Um, if you could put together a group of four or so living people, people in the world today, for a fantasy dinner party this Saturday night, for a Valentine's Day dinner party, okay. what, who would you like to have around your table? <clears throat> and this is, this is um, four people. Say four people, four people in the world today and you are the hostess at the end of the table. Right. Okay. F okay. I'm the host of the table. Firstly, I would like to talk to um, Daniel. I'd like Daniel to come. He's 12 years old and he's got um, chronic leukemia and he's got three weeks to live. Right. I want to know how he's managing every day. So he comes. Daniel. Daniel's there. Then I would like to invite Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford seems to be mentioned on every show we do by somebody, believe it or not. No. Everyone loves Harrison Ford. Okay. okay um, we have Daniel there, Harrison mm -hmm. Ford there. Okay. Then, um, Tony Morrison. Tony Morrison? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because, beloved, and I love her books, okay. I, I, I love what she's been through, and it would be a great connection between Daniel and right. Tony. They have um, one more seat to fill. One more seat? One more seat. And we don't say Bill Boggs, do we? No, I'll be happy to, to simply Relinquish. be the host. I'll, I'll greet the people at the door. I'll make sure the menu is uh, correctly cooked from the book. Okay. But you've got another seat and it doesn't have to be me. Okay. Um, Ung Sung Su Chi. Who is that? She is um, head of the, um, the, in Burma, head of the Democratic Party. Is she? I'm not sure she's head of the Democratic Party. I've got to get it completely right. She's head, she's head of a, a she's head political of party. She's head of a political in, in party and she's been in captivity for nine years. Uh, longer even. I don't know the full amount and uh, she's fighting for her people. So we're getting her out for that dinner. Mm. That's an interesting dinner party. We'll take the recipes from Dieting with the Duchess. I, uh, it has been a pleasure to see you again after a year. I hope another year. You know, I just thought if we could do this once a year, the viewers could see you get thinner every year and my hairline recede more. Oh, so we well, just go great. over the course of several years to do that. Yeah. Uh, so Bill, I'd like, you. I always like to end each show with a toast and okay. ask you please a, a toast to our Food Network viewers. Oh, well, good. Absolutely. Well, it's very kind of them to watch. Okay. What would you like to say to them? Uh, I would like to say um, thank you for watching. And then I'd like to say um, go with great compassion in your heart. Go with great compassion in your heart. Sarah Ferguson, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Phil. It's a pleasure thank to be you with you much. once again. Good luck. And have a good year if I don't see you. Yeah, I knew you too.